Okay, welcome to the 2011 Rice Expo and the Plant Pathology Stop. Uh, as you heard, I'm Rick Cartwright, a uh, former Extension Plant Pathologist, and uh, most of you know I've been around a long time, and now I've moved into a different position in Extension as an administrator, but I can't get out of Rice fully. So uh, I w today I want to introduce uh, Dr. Yeshi Wamishi, who's our new Extension Rice Pathologist, who will be based here at the Rice Research and Extension Center. And Yeshi comes to us with a rather broad uh, background in plant diseases and plant disease research. She earned her PhD from the University of Arkansas in plant pathology. She has experience with cereal diseases at Simit in Mexico. She has worked with sudden oak death in South Carolina, and she's also worked with sheath blight of rice with Dr. Ja here at the Dale Bumpers National Rice Research Center uh, here located on the station. So uh, Yeshi in a bit is gonna talk about a disease that we're pretty concerned about. It's something that's relatively new, and last year caused lots of problems for us in Arkansas and the southern United States. But before that, my job is to talk a little bit about the current situation of rice diseases in the state, uh, what we're seeing, uh, some of the problems that you may be encountering in fields here in the state. And with that said, uh, Yeshi and I have been out in the field a lot. We, we have a rather diverse rice crop this year, part of it planted very early, part of it planted quite late, and that leads to different disease problems. Right now we're seeing sheath blight uh, active on the early crop, but late in the growth cycle. So it's been relatively easy to manage with just uh, a few fungicide applications to particular fields. So not a big problem, but one that might sneak up and surprise you if you're not aware of it. We've also seen some leaf blast on the new cultivar CL261. This is a clear field medium grain and it's a little surprising given the hot dry weather but we've seen quite a bit of leaf blast and that tells us that that variety is very susceptible. So one you need to keep an eye on as well but statewide we don't believe blast will be that much of a factor given the hot dry conditions this year. The smuts are unpredictable, kernel smut, false smut that you've heard me talk about in the past. These two uh, are favored by heavy pre-flood nitrogen rates, late planting, so we're more worried about the later crop and if the weather changes on those type of fields. Can't scout for the smuts, so we use preventative fungicides containing the active ingredient propiconazole, and we learned in the last couple of years the higher rate of that fungicide, which is six fluid ounces per acre of tilt or its equivalent, and a little bit earlier applications during the booting stage, like mid-boot, is the way to go in suppressing these diseases and get the maximum effect of the fungicide. Other diseases have been modest. This is the kind of year that does favor stem rot on those fields that have a limited supply of potassium in the soil, so we would, we would uh, probably expect some more stem rot reports in August as, uh, as this weather pattern continues. With that said, this weather pattern does favor the one disease that I mentioned earlier that really has us concerned, and I'm, I'm going to let Yeshi talk a bit about her plans to solve this problem, bacterial panicle blight. To learn more about this and other topics, contact your county extension agent and visit uaex.edu.